This particular photograph you see is a self-portrait uh, from a series of 24 self-portraits shot over half a day uh, and uh, it's called, this one is called The Shroud and uh, to me it was the last photograph I did in that work because I had nothing left to say uh, and uh, it really signifies a lot of things to me because uh, in, in our culture when you die our bodies are burnt and then the ash is thrown into the river. And when you're born, the first food, the first water to hit your lips, uh, you're fed the water of the river. So there's a continuity about life and death and a timelessness about the location of the river. So it was really from that place that this work came. And uh, it's to me both about a loss and a hope, but I don't know uh, what the future will be. And that's largely the question I think about a city like Delhi that we don't know what the future will be and it's, uh, it's um, ambivalent uh, about it, uh, about where we're going. It mainly talks about uh, the resurgence of a community, you know, through the spirit of football, I mean, which is uh, one of my interesting uh, area in a context like when Iraq became you know, the Asia champions, which attracted me a lot, I mean, because they were playing as a nation in exile since last five years, and they become the champions of the nation, and uh, uh, they can't go back to celebrate that, because the time which uh, it was 2007, so you know the, you know, the, uh, the period how it was. So, I actually wanted to bring in a kind of positive story about that nation, you know, which nobody speaks about. I mean, so how uh, the country united, you know, the differences which they have uh, as different clans in Iraq, so to speak, because that was also one reason, I mean, the country was consistently, you know, under turmoil. You know, there is different, huge divide between different clans in, like, I mean, Shia, Sunni and, you know, other. Kurdish and you know like all those kind of issues so, but in the team it never shows especially outside you know that's also another story is like when once you get out of your own territories you feel a sense of belonging you know so it's something which reflects even in the football stadiums outside Iraq because everybody comes together they're all different clans but they all cheer for the nation you know for the you know so, so it was one venue which I found where Iraqis celebrate life at the time of war. This is actually part of a series of work that I was doing uh, titled uh, Between One Shore and Several Others. So here, like Richard Hamilton's uh, work, which is very seminal, first pop art work, you can say. And definitely that has had an impact on, on, on me or any, any other art person. But when I use certain things, like people can easily say, hey, that's Richard Hamilton's work, this is that, this is this. But it's like the people of Tahiti, when they see Gauguin's painting, they say, hey, this is that guy, this is this guy, that guy. So one of my intentions was also to revisit these kind of, uh, like, like uh, art history is, is, is paradise, actually. Like, like the kind of paradise that Gauguin was talking about. And to see if it's possible to make work from there. I mean, like, it, it's also time for the Tahitian to go to Paris and show what he feels like, you know. And actually, familiarity is a good uh, starting point or an entry to a work. So people know that it's, they probably even think it's Richard Hamilton when they come to see it. They find out it is not. So then what is it? Uh, uh, so that's where, like, and, and I also know that, like, some of the elements, unless people know it, they may not understand the finer uh, elements of this thing. But that is not necessary. I mean, that can happen later if people think that it is worth this thing. Sometimes it is not, you know, there's so much artwork in the world. But when, when one creates, like one has to, it has to be interesting to me in the first place. So it has to be most cryptic and uh, this thing for me, uh, where I sit and I, I know these, these things that, uh, that can possibly resonate out of, this, out, of, out of a kind of juxtaposition like this. There are uh, multiple things happening is that 
One is that uh, uh, something comes uh, with a purpose, then that purpose is being taken away and, and another meaning takes over, you know. So uh, the materials, objects, been, once it's been reused, the entire history, the entire past is changed and it, it, it gets a new meaning to, to everyday life. Okay, that is one part. The other thing is I try to make um, some kind of object uh, which has a shape of human, animal, you know, coexisting things. Uh, and it also uh, has a limitation or kind of, uh, you know, containers which is, you know, chopped or... So, uh, this is the way that how humanity uh, uh, been uh, the how the human situations uh, how humans are limited uh, how human are trapped in certain situations and how the situation uh, take shapes you know that uh, that is a very important part you are uh, you are, you are part of a situation and how the situation mold you, you know, shapes you. This work is about, uh, I mean, a lot of my works are, uh, relates to the idea of absence of body. And uh, a and, uh, lot of my work is also about, uh, uh, they're constructed as exercises uh, of revoking a lost body. And I do it with the you know, reference to the idea of food as a replacement for body. Uh, and uh, the whole idea of futility of such an exercise is built into that act. Uh, so it is self-evident in the work. Uh, and it also refers to the idea of uh, the artifice of actually building and you know, presenting it in a museum or a gallery space. Uh, so it adds to that absence of that function as well. Yeah, it is the idea of abundance, you know, there is so much bread and so much milk, but yet you can't reach it. It's, it becomes a kind of piece, of piece that only to be looked at, whereas those things are actually to be consumed and uh, possibly which would uh, allow replenish your own body. Uh, uh, so a lot of the things are kind of connected to the, our own consciousness of losing our own bodies. For example, if you buy a bar of soap, you really buy the promise of youth and not so much the function. But uh, that turns out to be false. So it's the same, that emptiness, you know, of, uh, and how all our negotiations with the world is kind of uh, governed by that condition that we kind of go through with our own bodies.